Howdy folks, Kevin here. One feature of WebDriver IO that I have looked over in the past is the REPL interface. REPL is a term that stands for something. Oh, read, eval, print, loop. So it reads what you say, what you type in. It evaluates that, basically it runs it. It prints out the results, and then it does that again and again and again. Now they have a basic document here about how to run the REPL interface. And what you would really use this for, I would think is if you want to give like a demo or you want to try something out without spending too much time getting a full test suite set up. So in this video, I want to cover what it's like to run the REPL interface and a few little tricks and tips as far as using it. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to open up a terminal and get it all set up. Okay, so I have my terminal opened up. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder that is going to host our uh, installation, uh, WebDriver IO and everything. So I'll do that. Okay, now with that folder set up, I'm going to initialize npm to save my dependencies. Speaking of dependencies, we should go ahead and install them. Um, I'm going to skip installing the WebDriver IO dependency. Instead, I'm just going to install the CLI and uh, also the sync package. That way we can run our REPL through uh, synchronous commands instead of asynchronous, which could, which would just take a little bit more effort. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that install command right now. So I'm installing WDIO CLI and WDIO sync. WebDriver IO is actually a dependency of the CLI package. I don't know if you actually need to manually install WebDriver IO, the package itself. It might just come with the CLI. Um, I'm actually gonna look into that Oh, further on, and I'll mention it. I'm probably going to do a new five minutes with WebDriver IO version five video because I have it for version four, and it's been a really popular video, and I think it's been really helpful to a lot of folks out there. I want to get it updated for version five, so I'll uh, post the results in there. Okay, that's installed now. The next thing we need to do is get either Chrome driver running or Selenium standalone running or any sort of uh, WebDriver related tool that's going to run our browser and operate our browser for us. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use Selenium Standalone, so I need to get that installed. So I'm going to use the NPM package called Selenium Standalone. Now that I have that package installed, I can go ahead and install the Selenium Standalone packages inside of it. It's kind of a two-factor install. You have to install the NPM package, and then it itself has an installer that's going to download all the different drivers. So I'm going to run npx Selenium standalone install, and you'll see that it installs the different drivers that we're going to use. So it's pulling down the Chrome driver um, and Gecko driver and anything else. Okay, I'm going to open up a new window in my terminal. In here, I'm going to start my Selenium standalone server, and that's basically the same as the install command. I'm just going to type start instead of install. Now it says I have Selenium started. I can actually check this, see this port number here? I can open up that URL in my browser, and I'm gonna do that right now. And you see I have a page that's open. I had to do localhost 4444 slash WD slash hub. And that's important because otherwise you'll get a page that just says you went to the wrong page basically. And uh, that's not very helpful. Back into my original terminal, I'm going to run the WDIO REPL command. So I'll do npx WDIO REPL. And the first thing I want to point out is you see it says WDIO sync found running test synchronous. If you didn't install that sync package, it wouldn't have found it. And so it would run them asynchronous, which would mean we'd have to deal with awaits and all sorts of promises and stuff like that. The sync package takes care of that for us. But you can see it says uh, we need to pass in the browser name of the browser we want to run. And then there's also some options. I'll get into those options later but I do need to make sure I pass in that Chrome driver or that Chrome browser. So I'll run this command again, and this time I'll type in Chrome, and it's gonna open up a Chrome browser for me. There's my browser. And then if I go back to my hub page, I can refresh my sessions, and you see I now have a Chrome session started. I could delete the session, that wouldn't be smart because it would uh, end the session and I couldn't get to it and all that kind of stuff. But I did want to show you that this is a way to see how your uh, Selenium server is running. Back out of that, I'm going to start running a few WebDriver IO commands. The first thing I need to do is load a URL. So I'm going to load the WebDriver IO homepage. Now it runs that command in the browser, 
for me automatically. I didn't do any editing magic there. It just ran it automatically for me because I am driving this browser using my WebDriver IO commands. Let's go ahead and get the title of the page. There you go. Pretty quick. Just returned the title of the page. Nothing too crazy there. What if I want to print out this text here? I want to get the element and print out the text. Well, I can actually, this is just a regular browser. So I can come in and inspect this element, wait for my web developer toolbar to load up, and go ahead and inspect it again. And you see I have a project title. So I'll copy that over. And back in my REPL, I'll go ahead and run the command to get that element and then get the text from it. And you see there's the text result from there. I can also do things that load new pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this guide element and I'm going to go ahead and click it. So I'm using WebDriver IO's support for text-based selectors. So this is saying get a link with the text of guide and then I'm going to call click on it. I mentioned that it was important that we used sync, the sync package. And if I didn't use that and I tried to run dot click, it actually is going to error out there because that dollar sign is actually a promise that needs to be resolved. It's a action that takes a little bit of time to run. And if you try to call click on it right away, it's not going to work. But with the sync package installed, it handles all of that for us. I don't want to get into too many details, but I did want to mention that. So now I've clicked it and you see it's taken me to a new page. I could run browser.getTitle again. And now I have a brand new title. Let's take a look at some more dynamic actions. So this search bar up here, if I type something in it like add, you see it returns some results and I can keep typing to get more narrowed down results. Let's go ahead and run that through with our WebDriver IO commands. So I need to first get the selector for this search input. So I'll just inspect and I have an ID on here. So that's pretty good. I'll copy that over. I'll use my ID selector, which is a CSS selector. And then I'll use the add value command to type add. And you see it added that value in and now I have some results. The reason I wanted to use add value is because I'm going to call this command again to show that I can narrow down those results. So I'll delete add and I'll type VA and you'll see it's going to be add VA in the text box. So now that's narrowed down a bit. Add value will always add to the whatever value is already there. Set value will actually clear the form field and then set the value or add the value. So that's kind of a difference between those two. One cool thing about this is right now we're in like single line mode, but if you have a few lines of script that you want to run, you can actually go into an editor mode. This is part of the node uh, REPL. And all you have to do is type editor, well, sorry, dot editor. And now you're in editing mode. And in this mode, you can have multiple lines. So I'm gonna copy paste over some script that I already wrote. And you see it's on multiple lines here. All I did was a, a command V on Mac, which is paste the script in. And so this is going to go one by one. It's going to go to the URL. It's going to get the title of the page. Then it's going to get this set of elements. And for each of those elements, it's going to get the text of it. I will press Control D. You see it says Control D to finish, Control C to cancel. So Control D. And now it's executing that script right away. And here are my results. You might have wanted to, or I might have wanted to, um, console log out that text. But uh, from my experience, console log doesn't work. See, if I type console, oh, console.log. That actually surprised me that console was there. If I type here, I should actually try logging something out. You see, it doesn't actually log anything out. I think that's just because um, WebDriver IO isn't listening for those logs. So console log is there. It's just not logging anything out. Maybe that'll be uh, a feature that can be added to the REPL in the future. But as of right now, console log doesn't really do anything. Thankfully, it doesn't throw any errors. OK, so say I'm done with my uh, browser instance and I, I want to exit all of this. There are two ways to exit it. You can hit Control C twice, and that'll exit. Or you can type exit. I'll just type exit. And now my session has ended. And if I go back to my Selenium Hub and refresh my sessions, you see there's no more sessions. Sessions, slashions, splutions. 
The last thing I want to talk about is uh, those options that you could pass in. I will go back here. I'll run that command again, and you see these options that we talked about. You can pass some of these in. From my investigation, I found that most of them don't really help. Um, you're not going to want to pass in the help option. It's just going to print this back in. Uh, I don't know why you would want the version. You could, but you're not going to be using the REPL just to get the version. You can update the host name and the port of your driver, but I haven't had too much success with that. The user and key can get passed in if you want to use something like Sauce, but you're not going to have Sauce service available, although I don't really know why you would need it. Um, you're not going to want to watch anything. Log level is something that you can change. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Bail, you don't really want to change bail. Base URL, you might want to change it, and I'll show you that in just a second again. We'll keep going through these. Wait for timeout, framework reporters. All these aren't really applicable for running a REPL. But I did mention base URL and log level, so let's go ahead and try that out. I'll bring back up that Chrome, and then I'll just do base URL, and I'll paste in that WebDriver IO base URL. So that's going to act just like you like it does when you're using when you set the base URL in your configuration file, and I'll show that in just a second. Um, the other thing I want to do is show the log level. So you can change the log level. You noticed above we had all of these info logs coming out. If you don't want those in there, uh, you can just set your log level to silent. And now those logs are all silent. So the page has loaded and you see there was no info in there. And then if I go to browser.url and I do dot slash, this is actually going to load that base URL, which is WebDriver IO, which is what we set. And the other thing is you see that info log didn't come out. Um, this is not great because if you run browser.get title, oh, it actually uh, did report it. Um, I think I was thinking of something else. Let's see. Go into my editor and I'm going to paste that loop that gets uh, each element and gets the text of it. Uh, and I believe that this isn't going to output anything. Yeah, so you see it didn't actually output anything because all of the output from before was in that info. It, uh, let's go back up. Yeah, you see uh, API help blog, API help blog. Uh, that is all being logged out through that info uh, log. So anyway, I'll exit out of that. Uh, it's just a thing to, to be aware of. Uh, you do get some value from those log levels. You probably want to just leave it alone and not change it, but I wanted to throw it out there just in case. One final quick note is that if you do leave this Selenium server or your session open for a long time, it may time out. It may close the session. Uh, I haven't ha experienced that yet, but I don't really want to spend 30 minutes just trying it out. Um, so just be aware of that. If uh, you see that it says that your session is lost, you can just close out, restart your Selenium server, and try again. Speaking of uh, restarting the Selenium server, if you're all done with your Selenium server, you can do control C, give it a second and it'll shut down. And then if I come back here and I refresh the session, it gives me an error because the page no longer loads because the Selenium server is down. So that's it for the WebDriver IO REPL interface. Pretty cool. It's gonna be really neat for demos, I think, because if you're giving your presentation to a large room about WebDriver IO and some of the cool things it does, you can have people kind of give you commands to run and show them how the commands that you run respond and, and work inside the browser. I think it's pretty neat. So if you have any other tips about this interface or see anything that I missed up, uh, leave a comment. Always love to hear your feedback. And until next time, have fun testing.